Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord, my soul doth weep. Seven more youth gone too soon, gone to be with the others beyond the moons. Muslim youth who care for the land with love and care, urban poor students out for a walk. One found in a bucket, buried supposedly after a police gunfight. The other disappeared into the dark of night. Another migrant worker from the urban poor returned home with cancer, killed in police custody. Their family, family finds them in a funeral home, killed for supposedly having drugs in the name of the drug war, but really, it's a war against the poor. So, we met with family members of victims of Duterte's war on drugs. We met with mothers and sisters narrating the last days and moments of their loved ones, shedding their armor so that we could feel and understand the depth of their pain. I and Pastor Janet, we held on to Auntie Catherine as she detailed the last days of her son, JJ. From initial worry after not hearing for, from him for a day, to the dread of searching for him in the local jails after rumors that he was stopped by police, to the complete horror when policemen fell silent at the sight of JJ's picture and told Aunt Catherine to search at the local funeral home. Why would I go there? Tell me what has happened to my JJ, she said. And she said that is when she found him at the nearby funeral home, along with the bodies of two other young men. And at this point in the story, Ate stops, and we pause as well. Not for translation, but to simply hold her and cry with her. But Ate is now a part of Rise Up, where she reaches out with these other amazing mothers to families of those who killed in the drug war, to organize them to rise up for justice and peace. The family members left us with many reflections, one of which has stayed me stayed with me since that day. Whether we are afraid or not afraid, the attack will still happen, and I am still learning to not be afraid. Remembering two those who died this month gone before, North and Abra, the Lacan martyrs, Rekha, A.J. Dell, and more. We celebrated their fourth anniversary of martyrdom this year. South in Mindanao, the Alcadev martyrs, and many Luban parents and farmers too. We remember the following every week Giri, Abelio, Sorani, and many more. Quietly, like the twinkling light of fireflies at night, their spirits live on and their families and tribes they taught and helped to defend. Families who continue in the quest for answers and justice when each and every turn is full of delays and injustice. President Duterte giving green lights to killings and threatening to bomb Lumat schools and launching three wars funded by the U.S. government instead of returning to the peace negotiation table. So not cool. So I am still learning to not be afraid, but I grow stronger as the people's movement for justice grows stronger. Kamo ang kusog sa lupongan, ang nagtabang sa katawan lumay sa komunidad. Bisan sa damo at kalayo sa lokso, kami na kawisa uban sa katawan lumay na matabang mi. This beautiful song means you are the strength, Salubong, to help the Luma people in this community. Even if you are far from the city, we are united with the Luma people. We help and defend here in Salubonga. And Salubonga also means, it's, it was the name of the school, but it also means unity. So when I first visited a Luman community on top of the most beautiful mountains I've ever seen in my life, this was the song that students at the school welcomed us with. 
It is a time in my life where I felt most at peace. Sitting in with the students in their classes and taking out weeds from the board patch they planted on a steep slope. It became my new home. But there's a word for being forced to leave your home because it is no longer safe. And that is Bakwe. Some Lumat students I met on top of the mountain are now in Bakwe in Manila. Mindanao is no longer safe. The Philippine army is occupying their school and bombing their community. This group of students are safer in Manila and for reference, Mindanao is all the way in the south part of the Philippines, and Manila is all the way in the central north. And they are safer in Manila, but the faculty, staff, and other students are still there, in danger. Their families are still in Mindanao, and not safe. Three Catholic priests killed in the midst of serving their parishes. Missionaries targeted, harassed, and deported for living lives alongside communities of the poor and forgotten. And yet, Sister Patricia Fox fights on, holding her ground for the workers and farmers she served. And when the media attention turned to her, she brought the poor and oppressed so they could share their realities. Not lost in the numbers, but drawing attention to the faces, a peace consultant and organizer arrested, organizing for the betterment of all behind bars. It felt more like a family gathering of 28, plus us, then it was a meeting in jail, sharing realities, years without hearings, cases that drag on and on, and separations from loved ones, yet still finding ways to laugh, smile, and remember for whom they organize. When I think about the human rights atrocities in my homeland, I think about the weight, 136. 169, 180, the physical weight of the bodies of my people. The weight held and carried in coffins down the street, planted down into the ground. The experiences that make us question, God, are you watching? My tears flow like rain, flooding my senses, but my heart is a raging fire. For the names that keep coming, the names can't remember for the names I won't forget. It could have been me, and honestly, soon enough it will be, as we continue to speak up and speak out. But the political prisoners we met, more than 28, reminded us that the body can be in prison, but never the mind or spirit. They sang us a song called Bilango Politica, meaning political prisoner whose triumphant chorus proclaimed, we will continue to act, we will continue to create, we will continue to fight. And so we fight for those lost, killed, imprisoned, and silenced. We fight on. We knew the strike line was a risk, but workers terminated for asking for basic wages, health protections from injuries on the job, and the basic respect of rights was vital. The violent dispersal during an ecumenical service public, thanks to Facebook Live. An anger turned even more personal with that late night phone call from back here in California. See, Eric and Hias, journalists from Long Beach, good friends, were actually among the 19 arrested. Rallies planned in Los Angeles, yet, for security reasons, we had to remain publicly silent. God, this is harder than I thought it would ever be. Give me strength for the days ahead. Sing our two journalist friends in the Philippines out and safe before we left. Two familiar and comforting faces from Long Beach. Two of the most talented artists, filmmakers, and documentarians that we know was really a blessing. I proudly introduce them to the rest of our team, to Pastor Janet. These are our friends. <laughs> they, were the, they were the ones documenting the Nutra Asia workers' strike and were part of the 19 arrested by Philippine National Police and company security guards. In the words of Piaz, the moment they took my camera, I realized they wanted to silence us. 
In reflection, I realized that the role of media is not just to inform, but to give context and the tools to analyze and see root problems in society. Through the volcanic ash, dirt, and water we journey. A flat wall, they said, <laughs> did not prepare us for the harsh reality. No cover from the direct sun. The Philippine military base just off to our left, a stone throw away. We journeyed into the mountains, mountains the military claim are uninhabited, finding a community, receiving us with open arms. Tomorrow we go to the lake to fish, they said. It's 30 minutes, maybe one hour away. Three hours, three mountains, and handy walking sticks later, we found the beauty of nature, catching a bounty of fish that fed us for days. The journey back, slipping and sliding through the rain and mud, with courage and this newfound inner strength, we learned what they were fighting for. Dance with me, Ate, Zoro begged. With a childhood illness leaving him partially paralyzed, the long journey to school over the volcanic ash, impossible. As weekend came, the community sprang to life. Children back home, happy to be with family, to have food to eat, to be kids. With Sunday evening, the high schoolers became mama and papa again, and the students headed back out across the volcanic ash. So I hope Pastor Jenna has showed you all the pictures already. Um, I, uh, we will have to. But uh, visiting the city of Bulacan for a week was one of probably the singular experience that brought our team the closest together. We crossed mountains together, got sunburned together, cooked food and ate together, and sang and danced and laughed together. We were one with the Aita community in the same way that they were one with the land they are protecting. Every night I would stay up with a couple others in the community and talk to the Nanai and Nanai, that means mom and dad, whose house we were staying in. After a day's work at their ranch, higher on the mountain and tended to their goats and horses, these late night hours are when they looked most relaxed. Surrounded by our other roommates, dogs, family of pigs, and several ducks, we reflected on the different things we experienced that day. One night, we would talk about different plants and herbs we used. Another night, about their children and grandchildren. We talked at length about what they wanted to see change in their community. A school that's closer for all the children. A health center. And especially to be able to bring in building materials and be able to bring out their natural goods that they produce from the land without fear and intimidation from the military. You're not the first one to look like that, Tatai said, pointing to my arms. I understood what he meant, my skin color. But you are one of the first to actually be with us in community, to care, to listen, to respect our views of life. I knew he was referring to the US military. Welcome to your country's working ground, she joked as the military motorbike ran past us, quickly realizing it was all too real. Not far from the U.S. government's former Clark Air Force Base, U.S. troops still roam the community freely with impunity, they explained. Standing blockades of building supplies left houses repaired with leftovers from war game supplies. It is not at all ironic that I woke up to read the news that today, September 16, is the anniversary of when amidst pressure brought about by the collective action of the people, a historic decision by the Philippine Senate led to the rejection of further U.S. military presence in the country. On this day, back in 1991, the Filipino people protested and lobbied the Senate to vote no to the extension of U.S. bases in the country. But, the U.S. military did not wait long to reclaim its watchtower in the Asia Pacific. The U.S. now has visiting forces 365 days a year, and war games, and most of all, military aid to the Philippines. Would you believe my dismay and turmoil when I realized that I would go to work just for a portion of that labor 
to fund the weapons and surveillance technology used to kill and terrorize my people in the Philippines. Those taxes should be going back to me and my peers here in the U.S. to pay off the trillions of student loan debt we still hold, not to fund bombs to destroy Lumont schools in the Philippines. So more than ever, the U.S. military needs to GTFO, or get the fuck out of the Philippines. Yet, as darkness sets in and my tears fall, I see the twinkling light of fireflies, the hope of justice and true freedom for all. Indigenous communities coming together around their shared struggles, learning from each other. I to students continuing education across the Lahar, despite separation from their father and their mother. Political prisoners remain committed to the struggle, ready to rejoin the moment they're free. Communities coming together across previous divisions and speaking with one united voice, that across sectors, the quest for justice is not an option, but the only choice. That in truly believing in a just and lasting peace means expressing true solidarity, because the people are speaking in a united voice. Respect their right to self-determination. Get our military out of their lands. Educate our people to understand their resistance. Visit the imprisoned. Help break the yoke so the captive can go free. All still apply in our society. Our country's actions have effects on their communities. So our actions have to be in real meaningful solidarity. Angels protect them through this fight for a just and lasting peace is their right. Keep us strong to not lose sight of the fireflies at night and wake us with the morning light. So we need all of you here in this room. Partner with us. The Calpac Philippines Task Force is a founding member of the, <coughs> excuse me, of the International Coalition for Human Rights in the Philippines both internationally in 2013 and the U.S. chapter, which just launched this past 2017. IHRP is a coalition of peace-loving Filipinos and non-Filipinos from churches, community organizations, political groups, and others outside the Philippines who are concerned about the human rights situation and committed to campaign for just and lasting peace in the country. We need one more organization here in Southern California to launch our official chapter and continue to educate communities here on the realities of the human rights crisis and the role of the U.S. government in playing uh, and the justice of the Filipino people's struggle. Here in Southern California, we partner together to, fund to fundraise to build schools and health centers in indigenous communities to respond to natural disasters, send annual international solidarity mission teams, like what we did, and to lobby our representatives to cut military aid to the Philippines, to the Philippine military and police, and to investigate the worsening human rights situation through a Human Rights Senate Committee hearing in spring 2019. But above all, work with us to educate others on the realities of the Filipino people, what they are facing, and to strengthen international solidarity as we work for a just and lasting peace for all.